Let's get going. Uh, good evening and welcome to the budget session for the Villa Park. I hereby call the meeting to order. Steve, we please call the roll. All right, so Councilman Cullicott? Here. Councilman Rossini? Here. Councilman Zimmerman? Not present yet. Uh, Council, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Miles? Here. And Mayor Pitts? Here. And also for the record, staff present are myself, Steve Franks, and Jim Gorzo, our finance director. And we have on uh, staff is Alyssa is running behind the scenes along with our technician, Angel. So our crew is here. Cool. Thank you. Um, I'd, like to add, I'd like to ask uh, Mayor Pro Tem if she would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. The honor to. Well, Alyssa's going to tie up. Alyssa. Pardon? Alyssa's going to put the flag. Here we go. Aww. Please stand. Place your right hand over your heart. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Um, Steve, uh, we received any public comment or anything during the prior to this meeting? No, sir, we did not uh, receive any uh, public comment. Okay. Then I guess we can just uh, proceed into the uh, budget discussion. Okay, well, Chris, I mean, uh, Alyssa, you want to start? We're going to go with PowerPoint presentation. Start with that. If Alyssa will get the screens here on that. Okay. So tonight is our first um, City of Villa Park budget workshop for the fiscal year 2021 that begins July 1st and goes through June 30th of 21. So we are uh, at tonight, we are not taking any formal action. It's a workshop intended to give the council a picture of where we are and talk about uh, an, an idea of our projections and in our assumptions that we're built in. And it's also to gather input from the council should they want to add uh, as we talk. So Alyssa, second slide. So the order of how we're gonna do things, we're gonna talk about our revenue projections and the assumption that for this year, then our revenue assumptions for next year, our expenditure issues that we are talking about through the assumptions and things, and then we'll give have opportunities for the council to add or ask questions or add uh, give directions to staff. So we'll go from there next. This uh, and I'll remind everybody this is being streamed as well. So our meeting tonight will be is published um, on our website afterwards, and it's also being streamed on Villa Park TV as we speak. So. <clears throat> If anyone has any questions, we can certainly get back to them and, and uh, do it. So all this information will be available on our website. The first slide is our budget projections for 1920. This should look very familiar because we went over it just the 28th, uh, just about a week ago, a week and a half ago, or two weeks ago, I guess, almost. Uh, our revenue for the current year, we have about $4.6 million budgeted in it. We are going to be under it by about 82000 and that's lower for a number of reasons, primarily uh, COVID related, property tax, um, property transfer tax, interest, permit, sales tax, our public safety sales tax, et cetera. All are basically our user fees are down. Uh, that's about 82,000. Our expenditures are overall, we're under budget significantly for a number of reasons. Our salaries and employee benefits, we have 145,000 uh, under. That's primarily due to the uh, one of our staff being out on workers' comp. Uh, we have our operating expenses were 277000 under budget, largely because of us holding some projects and, and those types of things. And then we have capital projects were 130000 under budget. Uh, you'll recall that um, we there was 953000 that last council meeting. The, uh, the council approved in capital projects for the rebudgets, or not rebudgets, but to continue forward. Uh, given the time frame, those are not included here, but but uh, they'll, the in our net position is 470,000 under budget. So next slide. Steve? 
Yes. Uh, Chad says he's waiting in the lobby. Okay, Alyssa. Here he comes. Chad, are you in? It's connecting. So, so let's say you're one slide ahead. You got to go back one. screen so I'm assuming he's on he's on okay are you talking about me I'm here yes sir okay so councilman um, Zimmerman what we were just doing the first slide you just missed was just a re recap of where we updated you on our budget last uh, on the 28th which right. is basically we are uh, page three of the of the uh, PowerPoint which shows our net position of 470,000 under budget which excludes our carry forward for budget projects that the council approved moving forward now we'll move to the next slide, Alyssa. Okay, so where are we going to go for next year, our projections? This is sort of the, the first estimated number about where we, look for, um, where we look for next year as compared to current year. So basically to get there, we're gonna take our fund balance that we had about 4.5 million to start last year. We take our revenue projections for 19 and 20, which were in current. And then we'll take our, we'll add that in, we subtract our uh, projected expenditures about 3.5 million. Then we will, uh, the council we recalled uh, approved 953,000 of projects to move forward on. So that basically gets us through 1920. Then 2021, we're projecting revenue of 4.4 million, which you'll see is lower than our current uh, revenues by about, uh, just about 80,000 roughly. So that's, that's reflecting the sales tax implication uh, for them. Then we'll tack away, take away our, uh, from that amount, we have reserves uh, and we have our fund balance um, for the, the potential PARS contribution and then designated reserves. Those are like vehicle replacement, uh, sick annually payout and those kinds of things. So in total, we'll have about 6.6 .6 million available to spend in all funds. That includes carry forward of uh, FBA. Last year, we had approximately 6.9 million so to give you a perspective, we are down about 300,000 from last year. Largely that's because we use some of our FBA, our fund balance available uh, to uh, cover our property, I mean our uh, projects. So where we are is um, we're probably as close to a static budget as I could say. I mean, I, you know, your 300,000 is, is not much because it's FBA adjustment. So next slide. How we did our revenue estimates for next year because that's sort of a really ticklish issue uh, our property tax variance we are actually projecting a zero percent growth over our actual collections this year what does that mean is that our assessed valuation may go up but our collection rate may go down so we really are not sure exactly um, where we're going to be because the governor has awarded a uh, ability to delay property tax payments. So this goes into the, the teeter plan we've talked about with the county. So there, the, the property tax variance to be on the conservative side, we're projecting so, sort of a flat and no growth. However, I, I would expect Villa Park's property may have some growth unless we hit sort of a recessionary trend, in which case we would. Our sales tax, you're gonna recognize we were about 
80,000 under last under last year or this year we're going to be about 70,000 next year we anticipate some level of, of small growth in our um, sales tax uses our passport we get about sixty four hundred dollars a year which we're collecting on that so that's revenue there that I'm, I'm we're showing now cares act and FEMA funding this week we're submitting a claim for about forty thousand in, in FEMA money for our expenses uh, what what did we receive on that best case scenario at 40,000 we would receive 30,000 because FEMA pays 75% the state pays 25% but that's an optional fill of the remaining uh, they pay 75% of the remaining 25% but it's an optional fill by the state and I'm not counting on that because the state has already uh, revealed that they're underwater at this point so the tune they're both uh, if you read the legislative analyst and you the governor's may budget they have significant um, problems so I doubt very seriously that they'll get they'll be re, uh, paying for us um, the expenditure reimbursement for the cares acts will be for uh, May I'm sorry April March all the way through December is where the cares read. so our net change again right now uh, you, we have not factored anything in for reimbursement into our revenue so we are expecting 80,000 less than our budget for this year as far as revenue for next year so that's sort of where we're at and what we're expecting now that's a very conservative approach but again I'd rather err on the side of being conservative so the adage that I've sort of always adopted and was taught to me long ago was you underestimate uh, your revenues and you over anticipate your expenditures and you never get wrong you never get off that way so we are going to go with underestimating our um, revenues and talk about our, our expenditures now with expenditures um, what's important to know and for and everybody needs to know who's watching is we will have to submit a balanced budget so we will have to balance to our number eventually our state law says that local cities have to have to um, submit balanced budgets to start the year that doesn't mean actuals come in balance as you know variances can happen it's happening this year so we're we're going to do but our challenge is to submit a budget for next year actually balanced so with our revenues we kind of know where we are again we're 80,000 less let's talk about the expenditure issues that we're going to have to address and this is sort of the focus of what we want to address tonight because I want to make sure the council has a good context of what we're seeing in our budget and what we have to do and they have a chance to sort of weigh in on some of these so Alyssa next slide and, and I would also say there's if there's things we're missing then let, let us know so this is a long list they're going to be the next three four slides are all about issues that we're going to have on our budget so our law enforcement contract that is the largest single expenditure we have in our budget um, it's about 1.8 million dollars 1.9 million next year the original estimate we saw was a 10 percent increase so Jim and I worked uh, carefully to um, express our concerns in a diplomatic way and at this point we are now expecting about an, a 5.3 percent increase that 5.3 percent reflects the same level of service we have now the reason there's a 5.3 percent increase you might ask is because the county right, last fall negotiated a salary increase for their deputies so this factors in debt uh, factors in increases that are both we uh, started in January of this year and will kick in again in July so those are approved contract expenditures and that also affects their uh, the respective benefit rates that are attached to that so those are contractual obligations it does not affect and everyone should realize that our law enforcement services will not change at all at this point our animal care services are we spend about 13,000 a year uh, and then we have another fifty six hundred dollars that we pay for the construction of the shelter amortized over a couple over so we're paying about eighteen, nineteen thousand dollars for that. So those are external, external, and talking to the county, they're doing everything humanly possible to keep it zero percent growth. So uh, while that is a eighteen thousand, we will probably come in under this year because it's actual expenditures. That's it. That's sort of a, a notice of an, uh, intent. That's what they give the ballpark number. But we end up paying actual. An actual is distributed based on a proportionate share. We have an extremely good population, Villa Park, with high license revenue. 
that's uh, the people pay. We have 95% of our residents pay their li that licenses, which is uh, the, the countywide average is somewhere between 50 and 60%. So we have an extremely uh, compliant um, group of residents that are very responsible pet owners. Uh, hopefully anyone who's missing that 5%, we can certainly make sure they're, they're in. Uh, our cash reserve is $1.7 million, and, and we'll talk about that at a different council meeting. Um, that is in there at, at, at is it. We are not touching the reserve at this point. Ours contribution, you recall we had a four-year plan to submit to uh, advance $100,000 for our potential, uh, for our um, unfunded liabilities and to keep our pension obligations sort of flat relying. We are over 80 some odd, we're about 84, 83, 84% funded in our, our uh, retirement, pa retirement um, program right now with CalPERS. Again, a healthy program is considered anything over 80 is considered healthy and we are in that very healthy range. So that's that being said. Um, a couple things now we're going to get into some where the decision, well actually the decision is the council has a decision whether or not to put in that 100,000 in for next fiscal year. We have, um, we are programming it right now, but that's one of the things we can sort of talk about later. We also had, as you recall, 50,000 budgeted toward the one, the green belt. We haven't done anything. We were going to meet in March and then the COVID uh, pandemic hit us. So we were, um, we sort of put that in the hold. We were going to have a public hearing on it, but uh, the ability to have uh, a public hearing was quashed. So we are in hold for that. Again, if we budget that for next year, my recommendation is we do something with, the pro with it next year, but what the amount is and what's set aside is there. There's also another item that we had, but that we had some money dedicated to us with an agreement, uh, but that money will not be provided to us until they take out permits from the city of Orange for the uh, properties. There's a 25,000. So we probably won't see that for some time because in uh, November, the city of Orange has a referendum on the ballot and no action will be taking on uh, permits until that time. Okay, next slide, Melissa. In our budget, what we typically have budgeted is upgrades station by station, and we move through and, and we've upgraded a number of them. I think there are two left in our system to do, uh, and that's uh, including screens and whatnot. I think mine is actually one of the oldest in the, in the office right now, but it's $10,000 we budget each year. Um, the next item that we, we have would be the State of the City inaugural event. We had not had this year because we laid slightly on that and then what happened is the COVID hit so that sort of is held out there but that's a discretionary item for the for the council. We did have a very successful winter wonderland event in December and that was ten thousand dollars. That's a discretionary item of part of the council. The housing element update, you recall we've been working with John Douglas on that and it's due in October. Um, and that plan is we had contracted with, with a consultant the final element will be $30,000, and he's well in midst of, of working on that. We'll be coming to the council probably, I'm guessing, in June, right around there, so we'll get some input early because the COVID thing has sort of slowed everything down. The homeless litigation, and we have a shelter contribution we make, about $7,500 a year. Um, that is something we signed up, and that was resulting from uh, a settlement agreement relative to federal uh, litigation, and that is for allowing us of shelters in Placentia, Buena Park, for our homeless. Uh, next year will be, or this year, next fiscal year, will be time for another election. Every two years, a cycle. We spend, and the, the uh, registrar of voters basically charges us for their actual cost proportionately spread among the county. Uh, we are um, hit with a, a expense in arrears, and so we're estimating about 10000 Last year, uh, this is a general election, so it's a slightly larger ballot. Uh, last time around, it was about $8,000, and there's some additional costs that we're expecting, including upgrade of their, of their uh, voting system. So all said and done, we're expecting in the range of 10000 that we will have. That 10000 is a mandatory expense, so when it says external, consider that mandatory. Uh, remember the other item, on last item on this, last bullet, is the budget contingency. 150,000, which the council has generously put out every year and approved, 
that allows me to spend projects and get things done. Uh, I will say that we probably spent around 30,000 this year on uh, various items which are related to COVID response, including partitions and various and sundry things here. So that is an item again, that amount 150,000 can either be zeroed out or reduced or, or added or increased however you want to. Okay, next item, Melissa. Salary adjustments. Here's where I've sort of done a really good evaluation of where we are. Uh, we are not going to judge, uh, uh, we're not going to budget any merit increases. It's hard to do that when your revenue is dropping. I, I don't see that as something that we can do. We can revisit that if our revenue mid year, if our revenues change, but at this point, uh, I've already told staff that we should not expect anything. Um, workload adjustments. One of the things I am doing is, I, you'll see I've used two of the staff members, Alyssa and Kim, almost interchangeably. Uh, we are, I'm trying to work Alyssa into a role. Uh, we, we lost Twee during the last year, and Alyssa has stepped up, and now we're using her more in an analyst role, but I need to pay her at that level. So I'm going, I want to make an adjustment, so it'll be a $10,000 cost to sort of bring that into parity. However, the management assistant in insurance, we had a management assistant, which used to be Alyssa, um, and we're going to, we, as a result of adjusting, there'll be a $30,000 savings as a result with no uh, loss. The other thing we're doing is interns, we're using interns in a role and not using regular staff. So I'm, I'm able to use two uh, part-time or half-time interns, and we've been very fortunate. We've had high quality interns, not just now, but consistently seem to attract them here in Cal State Fullerton and Chapman have sent us a wonderful candidate. I even have some candidates in the crew in the queue for down the road for next fall if in the event that any of ours would decide to leave. But we're using them and it's been very efficient and it's a very, uh, they don't have benefit costs. They, we pay them between 15 and $20 an hour and they get tremendous learning experience. So it's a very um, mutually uh, acceptable and, and, and good position. Uh, you'll, yes. Before you move off of the workload adjustments one, yes. can you um, just put a fine point on that? So sure. we've moved uh, Kim to Twee's position and then no, Alyssa no, we, to Kim's position? No, is that what no. no, Kim has always been an administrative analyst. I'm just retitling it senior administrative analyst with no adjustment in salary, just retitling it. She is doing some, some supervision of the interns and whatnot, just changing the, the title there. I'm, what I'm really doing is moving Alyssa into a management analyst type position as opposed to calling it the um, the office uh, manager. So then we're not backfilling to these positions, what we're saying. That's no, the I'm next, not. The I'm next not. one that, okay. No, I'm not. Thank you. And I, I think we've been able to function very well and be very productive as a result of this. And it's, it's high functioning people is the key. And I, I'm very, very pleased with the staff we have and the configuration we have. So this allows us to have staff coverage at all times for all things we handled. Um, this is the same coverage that we've been working on uh, pretty much for last year when you figure that last six months, a twee is gone and the six months prior, Kim was gone and we were functioning very well. So I, I'm very comfortable with this staffing plan. But I do have to, I do have the, the, I do need to move Alyssa into a comparable rate because candidly another city will just snatch her up and you know, I won't have any, I need to be competitive so she's not uh, at an at a, at a assistant level management assistant. Okay, technology improvements. Uh, did I answer your question? I'm sorry. Councilman, did I answer your question? Yes, I nodded, but I, maybe you didn't see me. Yes, okay. you nodded, thank you. Okay, um, technology enhancements. A couple things that I think we've consistently tried to do and we're trying to do even better. With COVID, we tried to set up a different, a, a better advanced uh, website, but we have some work we really need to do on that. The problem is, um, you know, we spent so much time on this COVID, all of us, so, but we've learned a lot. We know we want to make some website enhancement adjustments, and I, I need to budget for that. Uh, we also, we have a financial system that is functioning, and we bought it, I want to say 2016 or 2017. Um, it's got some modules that we may need to upgrade, not upgrade, we may need to pay to, to implement. And we, so I want to budget that in there, but that would enable us to, we are still doing manual uh, pay timesheets. We 
doing an accounts payable system that is not as sophisticated as could be. It, and the mayor, those who have served a mayor understand what I'm saying there. Uh, it's, it's not exactly, we, we want to have it so we can approve in queue as opposed to approve by email. And it would be a lot more efficient uh, process. But we believe that we can in, incorporate that into our system that we already have in place. So it's not a whole new system. It's different modules that we can do. So right now, for instance, our payroll has to be manually input by Jim, which is just a time, in my mind, a time waste. And I think we can improve that. Um, with that, so $20,000, um, again, is something that I would recommend we put in there. But that's discretionary. If the council doesn't want that, that we, we don't have to do that. Uh, council travel, we have 18500 budgeted this year. You've spent all of $2,500 or $3,000. Granted, travel has been minimized over the last couple months. But even so, my guess is you're probably spending far less than $18,500 a year. I, this council is not much of a traveling group as maybe other councils might have been. Uh, but I, I leave that up to you, and that's something in there that it's a discretionary item. CalPERS contribution rate adjustments. This is sort of a big deal, the big unknown. The rate increase we're going to see just as a normal rate increase is somewhere in the range of 15% this year. We don't control this, so this is external. This is mandated. So when they start charging us and they change their discount rate, we just get the bill. That's just the way it works. Now, they've already upped our rate, or de de decreased the, uh, the um, discount rate significantly so that it increases our contribution because we have to make up what they don't earn with their investments. We end up paying as a, as a provider. So we make that payment. Um, the other thing that is probably coming, and here's what is, you're going to see, Likely, we're not going to feel it this coming year, but the year after. Their investments at CalPERS are sort of they're rounded over a rolling five to seven year range, seven year range, I guess it is. But as you can guess, they're probably going to feel some impact of the market drops that we experienced this year. So they're expecting a, about a 7% uh, return on investment is what they're charging us at right now. I don't know that people get. 7% on their investments. That's sort of an unrealistic number. However, what the number is with a rolling rate and what it will be, I think we can easily expect a rate increase in 21 22. No question in my mind. What that will be, again, we don't know. There is some movement, and the governor has talked about it, potentially freezing current rates for the next two years. But that means ultimately your system is going to be uh, short money and you're going to drop in the amount of. How funded how well funded it is and eventually you have to catch up so it's a temporary reprieve and i'm not real wild about that i you know I, i'm sort of one of those in the bill let me figure out how to pay it don't um don't put it off down the road because we're just going to pay in the long run it never never turns out for the good so i'm always of the ilk that if you if we owe something let's start paying it and let's pay what we really owe uh, but that's not how calpers test necessarily works and we'll have to roll with them on that. Okay, the next item, if you would, next page. Melissa. The first item here is uh, discretionary, but I think the council's already approved the street rehab, moving forward on the street rehab projects, which would be the slurry seal, uh, then this and the street 1920 street maintenance project. To the extent those we have monies budgeted there, that'll be carried forward. That's the 953,000, um, and that includes the rebudgeted chamber upgrades. We're moving forward on all three of those, but to the extent they don't get paid out, we'll have to put them in next year's budget. So it just becomes, you know, the monies that we were going to get saved and, and spent next year. But they're on there, so because they inflate your budget. Uh, we have DG repair, trial repair, which we have not done this year. The reason we didn't do it is because after the rains, we were right in the middle of COVID, and it's it just didn't wasn't as easy to get a contractor out there. We're we're working on moving forward there. Typically, we have started projects and Councilman Colicott has pushed on projects each year to help us kind of get up our speed and, and our uh, pavement index, uh, PCI or pavement condition index has gone up as a result, but we still have a lot of work to do. So we would like to probably start another project for the coming year. So that's in addition to what we're doing now. What the amount is, is going to depend, it is always dependent on what we have available, but that's a decision again of what the council wants to prioritize there. 
uh, $40,000. Again, the councilman uh, pushed for that. So again, it's discretionary, but I would recommend we put 40,000 those that's money we use to just repair potholes and not do repavements, but there are potholes and things that you can repair and save in the long run. And I think we've had, had some discussions in the past about that. Um, Councilman um, Rossini has talked about handicapped, handicapped accessibility is $40,000 in a program. So with that program, we are, um, we would like to continue rebudgeting it because we haven't spent the money we could. Uh, I think that's again, something that needs to be done. One of the things where we're looking for, and we think we have potential opportunities, a grant that could help us pay for that. Uh, but I don't know, grant sources are sort of changing rapidly as a result of uh, the financial condition of both the Fed and the states. So I, I, I'm not completely sure that might be available, but I think it's something that we need to move forward regardless. Um, we've also had to work with OCTA. Uh, you, you'll recall we adopted a policy about handicapped accessibility and we need to uh, do a route of um, handicap uh, accessibility throughout the city. So we're working on that. You recall last week the council uh, the 28th, the council approved the Reco business recovery grant program. Uh, we were agreed that that's gonna be federal funding uh, reimbursement. Uh, we are continuing as of this afternoon, I was talking with the um, county CEO about it and there's a number of, uh, he's still in support of it, that the, the board of supervisors needs to ultimately make that decision. That being said, you received a copy, I believe of a letter that the mayor sent to Supervisor Wagner, encouraging him to make a commitment of a million dollars toward a federal reimbursement program from the CARES Act. Um, we received that. Now, I, I don't know when the county is going to be moving on that, uh, but we're, we're trying to get them to move forward and get us a commitment so that we can. We do believe we have the volunteers from the Investment Advisory Committee, a very strong group of, of very, very well-educated and, and very uh, strong business acumen individuals on the Investment Advisory Committee, uh, and that's they are pulling together and have the guidelines. So we believe by maybe middle of this week to early next week, the guidelines and an application process will be finalized and ready to go. Again, we don't wanna roll that out if the funding's not available, but um, we're looking, hopefully, we've asked for a million dollars. Now, interestingly enough, we've come across the Department of Commerce also has a program, believe it or not, and there's a lot of redundancy about what's going on with these reimbursement programs right now. So the Department of Commerce has a program that we might actually potentially be eligible for as well. So we're actually going to try and submit some funding application there. Now, do we compete well with other large jurisdictions who are also applying? Because that's a very limited pot of money. I don't know, but we're not gonna know if we don't try. So we're gonna, again, submit an application for that. And if we can, I don't view that as competing Revenue sources, I view that as, as if we get, say we get a million from each, we'd have a $2 million program. We don't have to, they're not mutually exclusive. They would be used for the same purpose. So I think our goal here is to get a grant program that's robust and help our businesses as best we can. Uh, and with potential federal reimbursement, 100% back there. So I don't believe there's any harm in getting a larger program there. And if we have more money, grant, more money granted to us by the feds, then I'm all for large, enlarging program so um, I think if, that, if I'm mistaken that's the entirety of the list that right now that both Jim and I were able to come up with as far as issues that we need to address or will address so if I can pause here and ask if there are any questions direction or concerns that the council would like to offer I defer back to the mayor how he wants to do that hey. <clears throat> Council people, any uh, questions, comments? Okay. Our, our, our process is, this is just sort of the <clears throat> first run it. This is all, this is, this is sort of the pieces of the puzzle. Now we got to put that puzzle together in finite terms and come back and that's our project for uh, the next budget workshop, which will be Monday, June 8th at 5 p.m. So. We have basically four weeks to put those puzzle pieces together and develop a budget that is balanced with all of your concerns in there. So if there are things that I'm missing and you don't think of them now, I, I, we have time to obviously incorporate those. I'd like to hear from you. Uh, it's certainly not intended to be an exclusive.
exclusive list what we have here. This is just to sort of give you the framework of things that we were able to identify. I certainly want to make sure that any other puzzle pieces are out there. Uh, please bring them to my attention and we'll do that. But our intent would be on May 2nd, or, I'm sorry, June 8th, Monday, four weeks to come back and say, okay, this is how it all fits together. This is where we've had to adjust or whatever. And at that point, the council could tweak and say, well, we like what you did here. We don't like there. We want to change this. And then subsequently on June 20, whatever, the fourth week of, fourth Tuesday of June, um, I'm looking for a quick sheet, the 23rd, we will um, adopt, bring back a full budget in final form for you to adopt. Again, there's a lot of assumptions here. You can see it, and, and we're making a conservative revenue assumptions. I believe in some cases we're probably overstating our expense you know, in those areas, but I think that's sort of the, the, a conservative approach we have to take here. Uh, we're going to face some real uncertainty. We don't know how fast the economy is going to get up. Um, we don't know if it will be as robust. Uh, we did start seeing a, a drop in late April. In early um, May, we've seen a real drop in our business, I mean, in our uh, building permits, um, and that sort of changes our activity a little bit. So there's a lot of things that are uncertain for us, and it's going to only get clearer with time. Even when we adopt a budget at the end of June, it will be my expectation that we're going to have to go back either quarterly or in six months and probably tweak it again. And I just think the reality is, uh, depending on how long this lasts with us, this, this new normal is, and what this new normal consists of, we're going to be trying to figure it all out and have to roll with the punches a little bit. So we're being very austere in our, in our things I can control, uh, like for instance, my salaries and things like benefits. Uh, and I'm sort of trying to incorporate projects I know the council has included as priorities in the past. So that being said, I'm optimistic we can get a budget works for us. We'll, we are, again, I would say well situated because of the, the conservative nature of this council in the past and past councils. So we are probably in a much stronger financial position than most other cities, but we're going to feel an impact here. And it's just a question of making sure that we don't overspend our resources. David, have you done any thought thinking about um, how this would change if we knew, for example, that we were a year out from normal coming back and we thought okay well once vaccines happen i'm like would this it, have you done sort of like any projection about well this works if this is if we all go back within two months or this works if we've all gone back in six months what if the economy takes another year what if it's another year and a half before clinical trials and we don't have a vaccine and everybody starts getting infected what have you are there other scenarios that you've gone into that um change any of our numbers or yeah, and, and sort of the big, there's two issues that are going to drive that. The sales tax, and again, we only have 220000 in our total budget. We're already projecting about 80000 down. So we, we've, only got, we've only got a little room to lose in the sales tax revenue in the big picture, if you look at it. Uh, the big unknown is our property tax. And that one, I don't know. I mean, I think the property tax value, the assessed role will come out this summer. And my expectation is that's a pretty consistent number with what we have right now. We're not going to feel the role changes in assessed valuation until the following year. And what level that is, it just depends on a recessionary trend. Even in a recession, you're probably, um, you could see a negative, but not often. You're going to see flat generally as a rule um, because I, we could still see some growth next year, but we're not budgeting for that. So we're budgeting sort of a worst case right now. But again, if the governor changes the rules on property tax collections, the county changes the way they collect tax, property taxes, um, that, that uncertainty, it's sort of like, it's like going into the batter's box and knowing what kind of pitches they have. I have no idea what it is, and then they throw you a knuckleball. You don't know what necessarily you can expect on something like property tax. So that's, that's probably our big unknown. And, and I'm not, that is a huge number for us. It's, it's, you know, three, $4 million of revenue that we get between three and 4 million that we get a year. So that number is what we live and die on. However, I cannot imagine even in a worst case scenario, our property values dropping, uh, you know, all that much. Now, even if they drop, your taxes don't drop unless the assessor changes the role 
change his evaluation. So even during the recessionary times, he doesn't automatically, in past, they haven't necessarily automatically reduced the value of your houses, if you will. Steve? Your property taxes shall change only when the, the assessor will change that role. And that's a year, or he could do a supplemental role. So there's a lot of unknowns on property tax. Steve, if I may, it's yeah. uh, Councilman Rossini. Um, I, I don't know if we can take a look back at, because uh, we don't have the Houston Astros uh, sign uh, capability here, but if we could take a look back using your uh, baseball uh, analogy, if we could take a look back at 2006, 2007, 2008, that might give us a pretty good uh, you know, uh, metric um, of what we might be looking at in a really, really bad situation from a real estate standpoint because i recall um having my own personal uh, the, the home that my wife and i had at the time being reassessed by the tax assessor's office and we never requested it they did it voluntarily um so maybe um we could take a peek at that and see what kind of um drop in property taxes Villa park had from 06 07 08, 09, or whatever period of years makes sense. Um, given, because I think where Councilman Zimmerman is going, it, it's, it might be a good idea to kind of have a worst case scenario, if at all possible. And I think you hit the nail right on the head. It's not so much sales tax, it's property tax. I, I think you're right, Councilman. He did drop, as I recall, as I lived it and I knew him at the time. He resisted doing a automatic valuation reduction. So he didn't do it without some prompting. And I, I don't think he did it right away because I think he anticipated that the market would not would improve. So when okay. it started to drop, then he did, but it was sort of not an automatic. So it's sort of a delayed response. Okay. You, sort of, you, you sort of see this, you know, because like he's, he's doing a valuation role right now with the valuation right now for our property taxes next year. So you're, you're like, he's doing it a year ahead of time and he doesn't have that, you know, so he doesn't have that information. So if he does a reduction and that's a voluntary thing he can do, he's, he's got the authority to do that, um, doesn't necessarily do it right away. So again, I think our impact, our risk is not necessarily this year coming here. It's probably more two to three. Three, yes, two to three years down the road. And I, th however, if the market is a V shaped recovery and everything happens on a V shaped return to economy, then I don't think you're going to have as severe an impact. If it's a W or a slow U, then you're going to have a bigger problem because then you got another dip and you got a longer recovery period. So a lot depends on sort of the market conditions. Um, you know, I, I mean, it's, it's it's a challenge, but I think we yes, we can, we certainly will go back and look at that. And you make a good point. Thank you. We have pro tem. Anything from any questions, comments, thoughts? No, um, I like how conservative uh, Steve, you know, is. Um, definitely agree with Councilman Zimmerman and Councilman Rossini about just taking a look at the past so that way we can kind of get an idea. Um, I don't think we've had to furlough anyone, so that's a good, that's a good sign for us being a small city. Um, I know it's going to impact us. COVID with our budget, but this might be one time where us having fewer than 50,000 people actually is an advantage. But I uh, appreciate all the work that's been put into it. And I know that Jim and Steve worked a lot and I think it's a very conservative, safe approach for now. Great, thank you. Councilman Calcott, any comments, questions, thoughts? Um, not at this point. I, I would like to take a moment and um, Remember uh, our neighbor, Jim Christensen, who uh, uh, he and his wife, Karen, have lived in Villa Park since uh, 1969. And uh, uh, I've supported uh, the ADA curb improvements uh, in part out of my concern for Jim. And uh, I know we keep kicking this can down the road in terms of level of priority. Uh, I'd like to see that, uh, that approved and implemented during this next fiscal year, if nothing else, in Jim's memory. Okay. Thank you. Councilman Zimmerman, anything else? 
think that uh, answered my question. Okay. One last time, going once, twice. Councilman Rossini, anything else? No, sir. Thank you. Okay. Steve, anything else from you? If not, I'm going to adjourn the meeting. Um, I want to thank you and Jim for all the hard work that you did. It was a great presentation, great first step. Really appreciate your, your guidance and leadership in this. So thank you very much. A big thumbs up. Thank you. <laughs> With that said, I hereby adjourn the meeting. And we'll, our next meeting is Monday, June 8th, budget workshop, that is, June 8th, 2020, at 5 p.m. And we just, just for clarification so the public knows, we do have a regular council meeting on the 26th. So between now and then, we'll have a council meeting uh, on May 26th. And assume it's also a Zoom meeting, again, unless things change. Um, I, I stopped trying to predict what's going to happen tomorrow, let alone three weeks from now. <laughs> the safe assumption. Understood. <laughs> OK. All right, the meeting's adjourned. Thank you all very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you all. Likewise. Take care.